this is it. Today is the day we're going to start making handrails. So, we're going to be making handrails. And like I said, we will be making some out of piano wire. Now, I had a computer malfunction. That malfunction meant I had to go to the store and get a replacement part. And while I was there, I stopped into Joanne Fabrics to take a look at some of their bending tools they have for jewelry. And I picked up some cool stuff. I got this round nose pliers. It's got a cutter and it's got a couple other tools in the ends here. Multi-tool small anvil and this copper jewelry making wire so what I did was I went ahead and I bent a set of handrails for this GP18 now let's take a look at it it's just my first try it's not that great but it's not that bad and it was easy and it was actually fun. I've got so many locomotives that are missing handrails. Stuff you find train show, handrails gone. And if you make your own handrails, you know it is not your most favorite thing to do in the world. So I did a lot of research by watching jewelry makers who bend wire. And I learned some stuff. And I applied it to using this. To, or to making these handrails. These handrails, I've, well, let's go back in time. I got this idea first from the Chicago and Northwestern Historical Society. In their modeling section, there is a PDF in there on scratch building an RS-36. And during the, it's quite old, but during the scratch building process, that guy, he bent wire handrails, and then he soldered them, just like I've done here, and then he shaped them with a cutoff wheel and his Dremel tool. And it looks cool. I don't know if you can see close enough on this. If you do it right, you will end up with what looks like a stanchion that is grabbed around its rail like this. That's what it'll look like. And it does. Now, way back when, when we used to use piano wire, especially back in the days of Ather and Blue Box, what you could do was you could get piano wire and bending these handrails wasn't that hard. You could do it with a lineman's pliers, a bench vise, and a needle nose. And then you could order from the Walther's catalog handrail stanchions for Atherin. And then you just put them on normally. And I did that a lot. It worked great. The trouble was always if you were going to solder to that piano wire, it was pretty hard. Because that piano wire is steel, and it's not so easy to solder to. But you can do it. We still have to use piano wire. I didn't use it here. So why do we have to use piano wire? Well, I happen to have a bunch of DD40s that need handrails. And using this very flexible wire, making those long handrails, not so much fun. But bending a long piece a piano wire should give me a decent handrail. I'll just have to tin it on the workbench completely, then I should be able to solder to it. That's why we need to do it. And I have a different tool for that. We'll get to that later. All right, so for now, I want to show you just what I'm gonna do here. Here is my Tyco GP20 sitting on an AHM GP18 under frame and mechanism. And I'm just gonna bend a handrail for this. I think if I drill the holes right. And I did not drill all the holes, did I? No, I did not. All right, so let's make, we'll make this side one here. First thing, so there's this, this jewelry wire comes in many different sizes. I was not prepared for the fact that the sizes are measured in wire gauge, and I didn't remember exactly which wire gauge was going to be 020 or better yet 015. 
015 handrails are really close to prototype. 020 are your typical Atherm Blue Box handrails. And so the 0201s are a little more durable. And they don't look that bad. It, this is not a contest piece. This is a daily runner right here. This is an everyday locomotive that's going to be put in service. Now there are various ways to straighten the wire, mainly by pulling it. And if you really want to, you can clamp one end into a bench vise and pull hard and it will straighten the whole wire. And it will actually cause the diameter of the wire to shrink. I learned that from the, from the jewelry lady on YouTube. Alright, so I'm not even going to use a template. I'm just going to free bend this thing. Oh, by the way, how much did all this cost? The wire was like three bucks. I used their app. They have an app like the Hobby Lobby one, which had a 50% off one item and a 30% off total in-store purchase on a Sunday. So I got all my, I got the anvil and the pliers and all the wire I got. And it was, I think, $25 using those coupons in the phone app, which I really like because then I have my phone with me. I don't have to clip a coupon and you get so much stuff there. When I go back, I'm going to get some 015 wire and then I'll have to put a chart on my bulletin board that translates wire gauge into, into measurements so that I'll remember which one's which. But this one here is roughly the 020. Okay, so to start this process, we need to start somewhere. So I'm thinking, well, we're going to have to drill a hole. There's just no getting around it. We've got to drill a hole. So what am I going to do first is I'm going to drill a hole. Now, I learned, which I'm going to show you as we go along later, how to use my drill press to drill tiny holes. which saves a ton of time. Oh, do I got a hole there? Ah, I don't because it's broken, that's why. It is broken. No, it's not. It was mated. Huh. Evidently, I replaced the pilot on this. Well, we don't need to drill a hole then because there is a spot there. All right, so first one I want to do is, I think I'm going to start this time from this end. I don't have this down to an exact procedure yet, but I've got I got an idea of what I'm gonna as we do more of these, we'll get our procedures down, get them refined. I found see those big loops I put on there? No, they're not prototype. They're kind of odd looking. But for today's purposes, they're just fun. And I'm not gonna be winning any contests with that but I'm going to have handrails on it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, earlier I had gotten a set of these tools. I think there's six of them. They come in a pack. I got those at Michael's. They weren't very much money, but they're very handy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the needle nose. So I've cut off a piece about this long. There's going to be some waste. That's okay. We'll live with it. All right, so first I'm going to make a fairly long bend in the end of this which I can trim later and since since I don't have a hole here I'm going to make it really long let's just check it where it's roughly going to go yeah see the steps are cut here so it's roughly just going to sit in there like that if you can see that okay now, like I said, I'm going to freehand this. Uh, I believe there is a train coming. We are watching live Kansas City again. Okay, I'm going to take this tool. I'm going to go on right down here at the bottom of these stairs, and I'm going to grab on with the tool. Let's see here. Just going to eyeball it. I'll grab on at the bottom of the stairs. See, we can, yeah, we can readjust this later. All right, I'm gonna hold it like that. Now, I'm gonna take this tool and I'm gonna make a loop all the way up. So I end up with that. 
This copper wire is super easy to solder to, and it is, it's way more flexible than brass. Which means that over handling these rails, you know, if they get handled a bunch, they'll get bent and stuff. You can just bend them back into place. They are not nearly as fragile as, as plastic handrails, especially on newer locomotives. Their handrails are just, I don't like those because they're so fragile. All right, let me layer on there like that. So this is where I want to come up. And I'm kind of eyeballing here where the middle hinge on the door is. That's roughly where I want to, I want to have them go straight across. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that right there. First, I'm going to make I'm going to make another bend at roughly the spot with this, with this little pliers at roughly that place where that middle handrail is. So I'm going to go down and grab this right about here. I'll just take it out. If I can get it out. And it lost my spot. Okay, let's do that again. Put it in where I think it's going to go. Okay, right there. Now I'm going to take this pliers. I'm going to grab on at about the spot where the middle hinge is. Okay, I got it. Now I'm going to grip it tight so I don't lose it. Okay, now I got it. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bend to the inside. See how easy that bends? I'm going to give her a right angle right there. Okay, so now I've got this shape. Now, I'm going to take my lineman's pliers. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to grip it. And I'm going to grip on about the width of the first jaw here. Literally, this is my own handrail design. And I'm, I'm looking on my screen here. I've got all kinds of locomotives going through a slideshow and none of them have handrails like this but mine's going to just because I can I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a bend this way so now I've got this shape okay now let's put her back on here okay so now what I have I've got that. There's a little bend in the end. And I'm, I'm just doing it just because, just because I can. Okay, now I'm going to go over. I'm going to try to line this up straight. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. There's going to be... This wire is not going to be perfectly straight, and I, it doesn't matter. It's going to look just a tad bit beat up. And there are locomotives out there whose handrails are a little beat up sometimes. Okay, now I'm going to come over. There's a spot here where there's a stanchion that's higher that goes up to the cab. And one where that it's lower. So I need to put, I need to put a little transition that goes up in between there. Right in between, so I'm going to go ahead and grip. Right in the middle between them. And I can do this in place because this wire is nice and flexible. I'm going to make sure that this thing stays as true as I can, as, as true as I can eyeball it. Then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to give it a little angle bend. And I'll just match that angle to this angle here. Now comes the tricky part. So now I've got this all the way over here. I'm going to go ahead and clip some off at this point. I'm going to clip about... Get myself a little easier to work with right there. Okay, so I'm coming across. I've got my angle up. Now I want to try to get it bent to match this hole going straight across. So I need to grip it where I think that hole is lined up just by eyeballing. So 
I'm using the middle hinge as a guide. Okay, is that gonna be close? It might not be close, I'm gonna have to do it again. Oops, oops, okay. I didn't have it gripped inside the jaws. Okay, now I got it gripped nice and tight. I'm just going to bend it over. So now I've got... Now I've got that. And... It's actually not bad. It's actually pretty decent. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grip right next to the hole. And I'm going to take it out. So I got it right there. I'm going to go ahead and bend it. Then I'm going to trim it. I've made sure that my hole will not poke my windows that I put in. I put windows in and I used a piece of clear plastic here. But on these, I used... I used um, micro scale window. It's like it's like white glue. I use that specifically for this reason that bending hand whale rails will knock out a window if you're not careful. And sometimes the window thickness is too much and the handrail can't fit. But let's see, did I get a match? Did I make it? Uh, I don't have any wait up. The other thing I did not do on this, I didn't glue anything in here. There's no glue holding these stanchions in here. They're just held by, fr by friction. So, if I need to take that apart, or take them handrails off, or decide I want to upgrade them, and when, when I learn how to do this better, I can. Okay, so now, it's a little crooked, but we don't really care, because we can form it in place. And that right there we can call this one that's good to go so now I'm going to show you how I make a stanchion I'll take this over the workbench in a little while I will tin this with solder then I'll take a straight piece like this I will stick it in the hole Check to see if that's as far as it goes. Okay. It's in the hole, just like that, right? Now I will just bend it over with my finger. And that will be one stanchion. I'll clip it. Then one at a time, I'll kind of, I sometimes I'll solder it in place, but if you don't use a heat sink on these, remember them big bolts I got on the workbench? If I solder it in place, I touch the big bolt up to it so I can solder this joint. And that's how I make a stanchion. Then I cut it. I leave some, I leave extra. I cut it. I go ahead. Put in the next one. Bend it over. Cut. Now I've got two. I'll just go down the row. Once I have them all, sometimes I'll pull these one at a time, tin the end of them, put them back here, hold them in place. Instead of my finger, I'll touch it with a bolt, and then I'll hit it with the solder. There'll be a glob left on there. Then I'll take the moto tool with the cutoff wheel on it, and I will shape it. And if I am very careful, if I am very, very careful, let's see if I can get a good angle on this. It will look like a stanchion head. And it's really easy to do. Smooth off the tops. Get rid of the extra solder. And then kind of go and flatten this top end down a bit. And you'll end up with a thing that looks like a stanchion. That's kind of a big glob right there. But 
you'll get something that looks like it is bent over. And that is our intro to handrails. Soon we'll be getting to a DD40 where we're going to need to do some of this stuff with piano wire. But we are getting good to go. Do you see that? That only, we, it took us, how many minutes did that take us? 20 minutes of me explaining it. In 20 minutes, once you get going on this, you can knock out a ton of these like nothing. And I'm pretty sure the more I do, the faster I'm going to get. And then I'll start doing three at a time. Three locomotives at one time, where I'll keep bending the same parts. And that is what we want. We want to get speed and then clear the backlog of all the locomotives that need handrails. So that's our intro. And there's going to be more to come on this so that we can have a whole series of how to do handrails.